Hello everybody, back again for your discursive writing. This time it is Online Learning Week 7. Our aims are the same as we have every single week. So we are working on writing the first draft of our discursive essay. This is all going to be part of our National 5 English Writing Folio. Later on in the year we will deal with the second piece of that folio which is a piece of creative writing but right now we're all focusing on the discursive piece. So we have been looking at refining a number of skills over the last few weeks um, but we should be at the point in which we've chosen a suitable talk type and we're working on the actual writing of the essay and today our focus is main body. So just a reminder that we're at the writing stage now and as you write, you may find that you don't have enough evidence to support some of your ideas or arguments. Don't worry, if that turns out to be the case, uh, you can go back and research at any time. Just always remember to keep a note of any research that is new so that you will be able to list it at the end of your essay. OK, let's start. Writing main body paragraphs. So why is this skill so important? Well, the main body of your essay contains the big part of your explanations, your arguments and your research. So it's where you demonstrate a clear line of thought and skill in sequencing your points or your arguments. So in other words, a skill in putting them in an effective order so that you can see one point lead to the next and you don't contradict yourself or make your line of thought confusing. And finally, obviously you need to demonstrate skill in how well you explain or discuss or inform or persuade us. Persuade if that's what you're choosing, if that's your aim in the essay. And I think a good thing to remember is what your overall purpose in this writing is. So if you have decided to write something that's very persuasive and that you're only looking at one side of an argument and, and your whole purpose is to persuade the person reading your essay to come to your side and think like you, then you need to keep that in your mind with every main body paragraph you're writing. That affects what your content will be in that paragraph and your style of writing. Of course, if your purpose is to argue a case and explore different points of view, you're going for a more logical, perhaps a more balanced way, an argumentative piece, make sure that your content also reflects that. So you're doing the for and against arguments and your style reflects it so that you don't become overly persuasive and then suddenly very formal and balanced. It's got to make sense and if you keep your purpose in mind, your content and style will work with that. And think too about your audience. Audience here simply means your reader. Always think about them when you're writing your main body paragraphs. Just be careful of your language and make sure that whatever you're writing isn't going to be offensive to someone or insulting sounding. You want to treat your reader with care and certainly not to put them off. Okay, so a good main body paragraph. It needs to do these things. You should clearly introduce your points. So in this paragraph, what you're talking about should be clear right from the start. You want to also offer evidence to back that point up, preferably some kind of research in there. You want to explain this research or evidence. You want to show us what it demonstrates and you want to try and bring the paragraph to some kind of conclusion where you uh, summarise that point that you've made and preferably link to the next point. In all of that it's got to be done in some kind of stylish way using language techniques. Okay top tips. Remember to consult your plan. Have your research to hand um, you're going to need to find those quotes and the statistics. Think about your purpose and the audience as you write. And finally, don't forget about using the language techniques because you've really got 
to make this an interesting experience for your reader. You've got to grab their attention. Your language techniques are a very good way of doing that. Okay, so the next couple of slides are in a slightly different colour. Uh, just to remind you that you're going to need to probably come back and look at these slides. So here's your checklist. This is what you've got to do for a main body paragraph. It's got a little acronym down the side, T's, like a golf tee, not a cup of tea this time. So T is for topic sentence or sentences. So always start off with a nice clear topic sentence to introduce your point in the paragraph. It might be more than one, you might be writing two, three topic sentences. Um, however, it's got to be nice and clear in regards to what you're actually going to try and discuss or expand upon. After that, evidence. You've got to back up what you're saying. You can't simply make a point and assume that people are going to believe you or find it convincing unless you offer something to really support that. Okay, after you offer some evidence, you've got to do something with that evidence. So our third thing to think about is explain. Explain and explore what the evidence reveals. And finally, you don't just end on that. If you can, you have a nice sentence at the end of your paragraph that kind of brings it all together, summarises what you now think or helps you link on to your next point. And this slide's just a reminder of the various language techniques that we've already practised um, over a number of weeks. Um, and you want to get used to using these. Try not to stick to the same sort of two language techniques. Try and really get a nice variety in, and it will really make a difference to the style of your writing. Okay, so let's look at the topic sentence, the evidence, explaining it and summarising. So let's look at how to do this effectively, starting off with some examples of topic sentences. Okay, so below you can see three topic sentences. They are taken from three people's essays on the same subject, which is social media. However, each sentence was taken from a different paragraph where the people were making a different point. So if we read through them, you should be able to identify, if they're good topic sentences, the point they're trying to make about social media in this paragraph. Number one, one worrying consequence of social media is it can have long-term impact on our mental health. Two, social media has proven that it can be a tool for good in the fight for making the world fairer and our leaders accountable for their bad decisions. And three, despite its obvious advantages, it cannot be ignored that young people use social media as a marker of their worth. And this is a real concern. So you should literally be able to pinpoint the kind of keywords in each sentence and they would lead you to the point that the writer is going to be on to make. Below you should see the key keywords and phrases for each topic sentence, which make it clear the sort of precise point that the writer is going to focus on. The first, the focus is on mental health. The second, about how social media can be used to make things fairer or to make uh, leaders, politicians accountable. The third sentence suggests that the pupil is going to go on to write about how social media is detrimental and affects uh, individuals' feelings of, of self-worth. So all of those are suitable topic sentences because they contain clear keywords and phrases that help us understand what the writer is going to go on to write about. Okay, when we think about what we're going to go on to talk about or write about, that's how we develop a point. So the next few slides are about developing a point using research work. So first main tip, try to be specific. Don't just quote a bit of research without giving it some context first. And that means roughly explaining where it's come from. So a poor or weak way of including research would just be to plonk it in in your paragraph. 
like the example, 74% of people who had social media abuse had made them feel worse about themselves. Okay, so we don't know where this research is coming from, and we don't know very much about it. Um, it's a very sort of bold, unclear sentence. A better way of doing it would be to introduce the research a little bit before, but giving it context. Many people feel that social media is affecting their self-worth. A recent survey suggested that 74% of people said social media usage made them feel worse about themselves. So we've got a sentence before the example, and that just helps explain why we're giving this survey. And also, we've included the fact that it is a survey. Okay. However, we can be a little bit more specific and exact. So the best way is at the bottom. Many people feel that they are spending increasing amounts of time on social media, and consequently, it is affecting their self-worth. A recent survey conducted by the University of Bath suggested that 74% of people said social media usage made them feel worse about themselves. So now we've got a sort of clear topic sentence, followed by some evidence, and we've been nice and specific in saying where that, what kind of evidence it is, and where it comes from. And just to remind you, evidence can come in lots of different forms. So we can have facts, we can have statistics, so percentages and numbers. You can include quotes from experts or professionals. There could be reference to recent events in the news around the world. You can use anecdotes. Remember, anecdotes are personal stories which you use to prove a point. But you would use these sparingly, so perhaps one in one sentence only. You could use surveys and polls. So evidence is in lots of different forms. Just remember, whatever evidence you use, you do have to list at the end of your essay uh, where you got the evidence from. So the website addresses or magazines or whatever it might be. So once you have your evidence and you have included it, and you've put it in context and you've been nice and specific, you now have to explain it. You can't simply expect the evidence to talk for itself. This is the most common error we find in discursive writing, is that people sort of chuck research in and don't really do anything with it. So it's your job to explain what your research proves. All right, so if we think about our T's acronym, we have our topic sentence, then we have our evidence, and then we have explain. So after your research, write a few sentences commenting on it. And you may also include your opinion when you do that. So let's look at an example which works with the topic sentence first, then the evidence with some context, and then the explanation of that evidence. Social media is proven to cause drastic harm to the mental health of humans and, in particular, young people. Okay, nice clear topic sentence. We know it's about young people's mental health. As a society, we are addicted to social media with the younger generation spending increasingly large amounts of time looking online and comparing themselves to others. This comparison often leaves individuals feeling that they don't measure up. A recent article in The Guardian Online revealed research which suggested that 78% of young people believe that, quote, social media makes them feel inadequate. Okay, so we haven't just stuck in the 78% kind of as a very brief sentence. We've introduced it, put it in context why we're kind of including this and we've explained where it comes from. And now we want to talk or explain a little bit about what that research is actually revealing. So in the pinky, purple bit at the bottom, this clearly proves that social media is making most of us feel insufficient, low and anxious about our position in life. However, it does not explain why so many of us still spend our lives on Instagram. Okay, so um, we've managed to do our topic sentence. We have managed to offer evidence 
and then we've managed to do a little bit of explanation of that evidence so what it's kind of revealing to us. Let's look how to conclude your point. So you have dealt with your topic sentence, you have offered us evidence to support your point, you've gone and explained that evidence and now you need a final sentence or two to summarise and bring it all together. Okay, you've got a couple of options. So this is the final part of your main body paragraph. You're wanting to bring your point together and it's even uh, particularly good if you can link it on to the next point. So we can do this in a number of ways as it says at the bottom of the slide. We could use some signposts or sometimes we call them link words. Uh, so therefore, thus, so, to summarise. Or we could use a linking sentence which we'll see on the next slide. Or finally, we could use a nice clear statement of opinion. So something along the lines of, therefore, I believe we should, um, which would link to the point that you have just made. So let's look at how a linking sentence would work at the end of this paragraph. The bit in pink there at the top is the little bit of the paragraph which was explaining the evidence. So this is going on to the final sentence or sentences of the paragraph which are sort of summarising and bringing it all together. So at the bottom we have a link sentence. So given that persistent use of social media affects us so profoundly, it is important to understand why we cannot release ourselves from its grip as this may help us to manage our usage. A link sentence is one which links back to what you've just been talking about in the paragraph so you're kind of reminding your reader and emphasising the point. And here at the beginning of this sentence, you can see it's talking about the persistent use of social media affecting us. So that's linking to the point you've just made in that paragraph. The last part of the sentence says something about needing to understand um, how social media, uh, why we're always on social media and helping us to manage our usage. So how we deal with it, how, how often we're on with it. And we get the impression that that's what's going to be the next point that the pupil is going to write about in the next paragraph. So a link sentence is a sentence which is able to link back to what you've just said by using some keywords. And it's linking forward to the new point you're going to make in the next paragraph. And that's a really nifty wee type of sentence. And it shows that you can sequence your points effectively and link one to the other. You don't always have to choose a link sentence at the end of a paragraph. You could just try and summarise your thoughts, um, a definitive statement about what you think um, in terms of this particular argument or point you were making, or maybe suggesting what you think should happen now. So there's an example at the bottom there. If you weren't going to look at use a link sentence, what a pupil could have used instead. Moving forward, we must help our young people equip themselves with the skills to avoid this negative impact on their lives, as it, as it is unlikely they will stop using social media. So they've thought about the point with social media affecting young people's um, self-esteem. They've offered evidence, they've explained that evidence, and now they're coming to a nice clear conclusion that, you know, moving forward we've got to do something about it. It's not okay just to say that it's happening. Okay, so that's another option for ending your paragraph. So once you've done that, you should have completed your main body paragraph. You went through your T's acronym. T, topic sentence. You clearly introduced your point that you were trying to make. E, you offered us some evidence, whether that was a statistic or fact, so quote of a professional or survey or whatever it is then you have tried to explain that evidence so that's the next e in our acronym explain and discuss it what it showed you and finally s you've brought it all together and you've summarized the point at the end of the paragraph so hopefully that's a good nice clear 
main body paragraph. So now you're going to ask yourself a few questions because you want to actually check this paragraph and edit it. You want to read it, preferably read it aloud to yourself or read it to someone else. Ask yourself, does it make sense? Is it technically accurate? So if you're not sure about that, the advantage of typing it in a Word document is that obviously you can do the review and you can do the grammar and spelling check. All right, and that does help us. And finally, is there any way you can improve your language techniques? So you may have been thinking so hard about getting in your evidence and discussing it that you've kind of forgot that you're supposed to engage your reader with those interesting language techniques. Um, whether that be sort of lists or rule of three or a note of language or uh, a bit of alliteration or repetition or a short sentence for impact. Is there anything you could do to sort of look your lang uh, look over and make your language more effective? So you can do some editing and once you've done that, hopefully you're very happy and that's a very effective main body paragraph. So our pupil has decided that their paragraph makes sense when they read it back, that technically it's fine, spelling, grammar is okay, but they've decided to add one or two more things or change a couple of sentences so that the language is a little bit more interesting and effective as we read. So this is our final paragraph. Constant social media use has worrying consequences. So they've gone for a shorter opening topic sentence just to make a bit more of a clear impact. In fact, it is proven to cause drastic harm to our mental health and in particular, the mental health of our young people. Here, our pupil has decided to use personal pronoun, our, OU, our, sorry, OU, are a couple of times, just to get the reader to feel involved that they are part of this world that they're writing about. So a wee bit of change to the topic sentence. As a society, we are addicted to social media with the younger generation spending increasingly large amounts of time looking online and comparing themselves to others. This comparison often leaves individuals feeling that they don't measure up. A recent article in The Guardian Online revealed research which suggested that 78% of young people believe that, quote, social media makes them feel inadequate. So we've left the evidence, that seemed fine, it was nice and clear and it was detailed and it was put in context. Clear proof that social media is making most of us feel insufficient, low and anxious about our position in life. However, it does not explain why so many of us still spend our lives on Instagram. So the sentence has only been slightly changed here, just uh, beginning. Final sentence, so given that persistent use of social media affects us profoundly, it is important to understand why we cannot release ourselves from its grip, as this may help us to manage our usage and protect our fragile mental health. So we've just added a tiny section on the end there, our fragile mental health, just to kind of reinforce that that's what our point is about, but also it's a bit more emotive use of language, fragile there kind of um, get the point across. So now if you've been very patient and you've read through and you've listened, we're at the end. So you should understand the skills required to have a good main body paragraph and uh, you can go over the slides as many times as you want. Now very few of you will be writing on social media. You have your own topic. <clears throat> this was just to demonstrate the skills. And it's your chance now to go and write the first two main body paragraphs in your essay, having already uh, typed up the introduction. If you can, please send them to your teacher to have a wee read through and give you some feedback. So on SharePoint, you will find, well, you've already found this PowerPoint presentation. You will also see that there is a Word document there which says SQA template desk draft one. So if you haven't already done so, you can download this. And this is the special Word document with margins and space for your SQA candidate number that you'll use for your final folio piece. Um, if you just typing onto a Word document now, that's absolutely fine. You can always cut and paste onto that later. 
if you are concerned about not being able to use IT, um, it's important that you're going to contact us soon so we can work out if anybody needs further support in regards to um, IT hardware. Okay.